All right. Thanks, everybody. I, I do appreciate you being here for our Wednesday CLOT class here on April 1st, 2020. Let's bow the class in. Chinese, Filipino, right hand here, left hand here, no problem. Thai, the super easy one. Left hand makes a table for the right hand, Indonesian. Got it. Left hand drops, tap your chest, go to your right side, palm down. Beautiful. French and Dog Brothers, then Japanese, we just give a little bow. Okay. Um, so I'm going to warm you up with material that was covered in last week's class. So if everybody wants to have a seat, and again, depending on what kind of a floor you're training on, your health is more important than C-Lot, period. So don't feel the need to be hardcore. Don't, if you're on hardwood floor or if you're on, you're on thin carpeting, please back it off. I don't want anybody to get injured. It's, it, you know, you are responsible for you. So hi, Sawar, hi, Cobra. My left foot is posted. My right leg is bent. I'm guarding my, uh, my hand with my left, my face with my left hand and my right hand is posted. We're going to, we're going to do eight reps of the seaweed switch. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Very nice. Everybody, if you're staying with me and it's standardized, take your left leg, bend it behind you, bring your right leg in just a little bit. Hands stay the same. So right hand posted, left hand guarding my face. Now we're in the low cobra or the low siwa. So we're gonna have the seat spin. Fe uh, weight is on your rear end, you got it. Feet go out in front of you. Switch one. And two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight. Nice job. All right. This next one is the windshield wiper. You're having your weight come up. Your feet are switching under your rear end as opposed to in front of you. This one is a little harder on the knees. So once again, everybody, please make good decisions about what kind of surface you're training on. If that means that you're not going to do it because you're on a hardwood floor, I totally respect that. Okay. It's your, <laughs> I know I sound like a broken record. Your health is very important to me. So make good decision. We sometimes in martial arts, there's this very archaic, like push through the pain kind of a thing. But like, if that pain is you blowing your knees out, then that's no good, all right? So just make good decisions. Here we go, windshield wiper for eight reps. One, two, feet going under your rear end. That's it. Three, and four, five, and six, nice, seven, and eight. Excellent. All right, let's introduce one new ground mobility exercise since it's, it's another week, um, is gonna be the horseshoe roll. This is really great for your back. Um, the way that I like to teach this, I want you to visualize your head making the le a letter U, just the U type horseshoe shape. And I'll do this for you twice, super broken down, but to do it broken down is really, really hard. So we're gonna have to find some kind of good pacing. So to, to, I'll turn to the side for you and then I'll do it the other way. To break this down, elbow, shoulder blade, flat back, the other shoulder blade, the other elbow up on the other hand. So elbow, shoulder blade, flat back, shoulder blade, elbow, 
hand. So from this side, again, this is broken down. I'll do a few reps at speed, which is much more natural. This is elbow, shoulder blade, flat back. My feet have come even at this point. Shoulder blade, elbow, hand. And then I reverse that. At speed, I'm just doing this. Okay, that's without me breaking it up. Um, feet, yeah, feet are switching in front of you. I'm looking at some of the people doing it. That looks pretty nice. Okay, can we try some reps together? Left leg back, right leg in front of you. Left hand guarding your face, beautiful. Right hand posted, ready, one. Two, nice. Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nice job. Relax the body for a second. Excellent. Okay. Um, we're going to work on something. Again, that's a little bit of a bonus. My plan today is to walk you through 100% of my yellow ikit requirements, which is my first level in my CLOT core curriculum, okay? So a lot of this, especially the ground domain, I covered in last week's class. Um, I'm not trying to sound like a salesman, if you missed the class, you should watch it on YouTube. That way you have it and you know exactly what we've covered. Um, and then I also don't want to sound like a salesperson, especially if you are not a member of my online portal. Um, Cause if you're in the online portal, you have all of this laid out for you. But um, anyway, so let's go back to high Cobra. Can we, can we go back to this posture? And I want to make a point I still need you, come stand here, okay? Um, I wanna make a point. Let's do, let's go back to our seaweed and then I wanna show you one skill. Can we just do six slow, relaxed reps of our seaweed? One, two, three, four, five, six, all right, and now bear with me, and here we're going to get to the thing that I want to show you. Give me three more reps. One, two, three. Okay, so if, you're, if you stayed on the same side with me, your left hand is posted, your right foot is posted, push yourself up and kick with your left foot, swing this through, and stand up. Nice job. Okay. Now squat back down, post your left hand, kick your left leg back through and replace the body, relax the body. Nice, switch, one, two, three. Repeat that, I'll, I'll turn to the side for you, on the other side. So right hand posted, left foot posted. Tuklau, that's the kick with your right, Swing this through, guard your face, then replace the right hand, kick through, and relax the body. Beautiful job. Okay. So, um, the reason that I had you do six and then three and stand and then three and stand, that was usually the procedure at the Inosanto Academy during CLOC class. That's usually what we do. Six of just the reps of whichever ground mobility exercise we're doing, then three, and then whichever side stand up, then three more, then stand up on the other side, okay? Um, the reason I wanted you to do that with the high sawa and the seaweed is the low sawa is exactly the same procedure, but you just 
you basically go from the low sawa to the high sawa stand and then replace it and then reset the low sawa but so we're going to do that together with the seat spin only the seat spin um so that you can learn that procedure so let's everybody left leg behind you right foot in front of you in the low cobra or the low sawa we're going to do the same thing only with this exercise and then later we'll build these skills and start giving you some more reps for right now i just want to teach it to you so one two three four five six good then th three again one two three okay take that right foot post it kick swing it through stand good replace the left hand kick back through and then replace the low sawa right leg behind you nice switch one two and three post the left foot kick up post your right hand again guard your face kick through replace the low sawa nice job really sharp everybody looks great good okay so three pieces of ground-based offense left leg is behind you the roundhouse kick so these are these are probably going to be three kicks that you're all familiar with we're just going to do them ground based on the ground so roundhouse slide it back so imagine it looks like most of you are kicking me this direction with your roundhouse kick unless the screen is flipping if i'm looking at you i'm kicking you this way in your face keeping my my foot on the floor as i drag it back for now beautiful let's do six of those together ready one two guard your face when you come back three keep your eyes forward four five and six switch sides good with any switch that we've learned so far good right leg one two three four five and six nice pick any switch and switch sides good next tool the side kick so prime it thrust it in their face return it just like a side kick except we're ground based right now left side kick six of them ready one good two good three four five and six good switch sides right side kicks one two three four five and six good pick any of those switches and switch last kick is the sickle kick so your left leg is going to come up it's going to snap back like a heel hook kick so most of you would be kicking me you prime it here kick me back this direction with your heel okay it's called the sickle kick ready one yeah two three 
four, five, and six. Good. Choose any of those switches and switch sides. Nice job. Right leg, and then we're pretty done for the ground portion for today. Ready? One. Nice. Two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Good. All right. Relax the body. Beautiful. Make your way to standing when you're ready. Nice. Okay. Review for you. Um, so the uh, guy on one, three footwork patterns, the attack T. So my feet are neutral and I'm coming in. Feet are neutral, I'm not in the lead, coming in. The offensive T. So feet are neutral here, coming in on center line, going back, replacing the lead. Okay. I'm, I'm using the stick so that you can see the pattern. Let me see, can everybody make that pattern? I can just see real quickly. Make sure everybody is, got it. Good, nice, beautiful, yep. Good, keep going. This is, again, we're getting a nice, you know, we're burning some calories, we're moving. If you touch your knees, it's a little bit more Indonesian. You can also just kind of do the uh, half moon step in, but that's entirely up to you. Okay, beautiful. Great job. Okay, guy on two, the, the opposite is the retreating or the defensive triangle. So I'm going back, going back, going back, going back on center line. Couple minutes. I need you. Okay. Yeah. All right. My my daughter's sitting here, guys, bored to tears. Because <laughs> she's gonna help me with the stand-up portion. So we'll we'll get to that in a moment here. Okay. This is Guy Young too. Keep going. Just so I can see. Good. Keep going. You can touch your knees again. It's more Indonesian. That stylization. Remember, the Indonesians were colonized by the Dutch. They had to hide their art upon penalty of death. So a lot of the Indonesian influence is very stylistic. You can also just slide it back, like a half moon type of thing on the ground. Or you can step straight back, and it starts to look more like the Jenga from Capoeira. And because we're very much an Inosanto influence system, if wh whichever feels best to you, if you're doing the pattern properly, it's fine. Usually, there's a lot of times in um, Inosanto influence training where you'll ask, is this right? And then you'll get, well, the pattern looks right. Does it feel comfortable? Do you feel like you have balance and structure? then the answer is yes, okay? And you, sometimes the only thing that's difficult is how much freedom you have, okay? Remember guy on two, this is the one you're just doing because we're gonna need it for, um, for something in a few moments here. Guy on three will be awfully familiar to a lot of you with a Filipino martial arts background, is just going to be our female triangle. This is a little wide here, but female triangle. My feet meet at the point, and I step out along the sides. This is guy on three. Okay, keep going. Again, the only thing that's difficult is how much freedom you have. I see some people playing with some variations. That's awesome. 
Okay, so if I want to do Gaiyang three full front, like almost like old school Thai boxing, because for when I started in Thai boxing, the hands used to be even, and then a few years ago, uh, Ajahn Chai made the left hand in front. But here, you could do Gaiyang three and like keep your hands completely even, step out completely square, full front. That would be fine. Or you could step out with the same side shoulder as, um, like, if, if I'm stepping out with my left foot, I lead with my left shoulder. I might do that, and I might drop my lead hand, or I could keep it up. It's a little awkward to keep it up, but I could keep it, drop it, and shield with the rear hand. Or step out. Lean in with the opposite side shoulder. So when I step with my left, I lean with my right. When I step with my right, I lean with my left. All of those are completely acceptable things to explore in Gaion 3. And I will, I, in, in my formal curriculum, I don't have A, B, and C variation. If you're doing the footwork properly, uh, whatever feels good with the hands will be okay. All right. So now, um, an exercise, everybody. At the Inosanto Academy, normally, I'm sorry, I know I'm out of frame. Um, we would do this with cones. If you don't have a cone, it's really fine. Cone just gives you something to kick over. And again, if you've ever taken a capoeira class, you know a lot of capoeira instructors are big on cones for the solo kicking drills. Um, I think I shared this last class. At the Inosanto Academy, there's a lot of crossover between capoeira and um, the sea lot, okay? Um, because it, it just, <laughs> it makes everything better. You have more options to draw from. Okay, anyways. So we're gonna go to Gaiyang 2, and it's really however you wanna do it, but I'm gonna ask you to do three reps with me, starting with your right foot and then freeze. So everybody go with me. One, that's my right foot. Switch two, that's my left foot. Back, switch three and freeze. Now my right foot is back, okay? Now when I say go, I want you to throw a right roundhouse kick towards like if there was somebody in front of you and I want you to land with your feet even facing the screen. So what do I mean by that? Just freeze where you're at, roundhouse kick and I land with my feet even. So everybody ready, go. Roundhouse, land with your feet even. No, no lead, okay? Now left foot, one, Switch two, my right foot's back, and switch three, freeze. My left foot is back. Do the same thing with the roundhouse kick and then land neutral, go. Beautiful, that's it. So that's the procedure, that's the procedure. We're gonna use that with roundhouse kick, side kick, and what did I write, inward crescent kick. So let's do the side kick, right leg back, one. Switch two, left leg is back. Switch three, right leg is back and freeze. When I say go, throw a side kick and then land in neutral posture, go. Beautiful, fantastic. And then just keep your hands up, but that was excellent. Left hand back, or left leg back, excuse me, left leg back, switch, right leg back, switch, left leg. Side kick, go. Nice. And right leg back. One. Switch two. Switch three. And now we're going to go inward crescent kick and land with our feet even. Go. Nice. Left leg back. One. Switch two. Right leg is back. Switch three. Left leg is back. Freeze. Left leg, inward crescent kick, land even, go. Nice, beautiful. All right, relax, fantastic. Okay, so that is, that, that is the 
um, introduction to that training procedure. Now, what is that for? Remember, later you're gonna have four modalities for the for the light sparring or the play within the ground uh, domain of Mafalindo Silat. You're gonna have ground versus ground where I'm doing all my kicking and I'm, I'm, we're both on the ground. I know I don't have a partner right now, I'm not delusional, but both of us would be on the ground. Then if my partner's on the ground and I'm the stand-up player, I'm relating down towards the ground player. That's really what we're prepping for with this drill. Then the third modality, I'm the ground bass player playing up at the stand-up person here, right? So, you know, and then the fourth modality is we both can go up and down at will. And that's kind of what we're building towards, okay? Take your belt off, okay? All right, so um, just give, I'll give my daughter a quick second here. We did our ground mobility exercises. We did our ground offense. We did our stand-up game development. Now we're gonna get into Southeast Asian hands. So um, five or six responses here for the jab. And we, we start in my first level developing our basics against, well, let me, sorry, let me restart. We're in the stand-up domain now. We're going to start by developing our basics in the stand-up domain against somebody in an orthodox lead firing a jab with their left hand. Um, as it's been related to me, one of the problems with C-Lot in the United States in the 80s, and this is way before my time, was the C-Lot people knew a million and one beautiful techniques from this formal c lot feed against the right hand but the minute that it was another structure um they had trouble so in mafalindo we we learn our basics against very standard attacks so right now we're going to learn to deal with the jab okay so she's in a left lead left lead okay don't worry about your hair come on left lead and um so these are five or six responses that I teach in the first level against the jab, okay? So, come on, hurry up. All right, okay, come on. And so, split. Now that is, I know that looks like a lot like Wing Chun because that is Pak Loi Buji Da. But in um, a lot of Southeast Asian martial arts, they just call that split entry and Sungab. Sungab is the finger jab, jab me. So, turn your face one more time. So my right hand, if, if I'm doing this against somebody in an orthodox lead who's right-handed, it's their left hand. My right hand goes on the outside. My left hand goes on the inside. A sungab could go to the eyes or the throat, or I could punch, okay? So jab me again. So a uh, split is the first one, split entry. Number two, jab me. Slide, okay, come on, deal with it. I'm a little sweaty, give me a break, okay? So slide, my, my right hand goes over, get on it, please, okay, come on. My right hand goes over, it's a sliding leverage attack, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna sungab either the eyes or the throat, okay? So split, slide. Third one, throw slowly. My lead hand guides it into my rear elbow. So Seiko. So my, if we're fighting somebody against an orthodox lead, we're gonna match their lead in a left lead. My left hand guides the punch into my right elbow. Some systems throw in slow motion. Some systems will just try to pick it up and basically meet the timing. The variation, the way that I teach it is I guide it because that energy is really, if she throws super fast, I'm just trying to slap it, I mean, without actually breaking her knuckles. That's the timing. 
is to slap it right into that elbow. So split, slide, seco, those are the first three. Then we have two more. Vertical gunte. So my right hand parries, my left hand just comes up and mouses the crazy bone. Vertical gunte. Okay, it looks it looks a little Abbott and Costello-ish, but it, it hurts a lot. Okay. So again, for vertical gunting, I can drop my lead hand just a little bit. Rear hand parries, left hand is going to come up and mouse the crazy bone. That's the vertical gun tank. Lastly is the diagonal gun tank. Now the diagonal gun tank doesn't do any damage, but it moves her center line. If she wants to throw her cross, that's already computed. So let me break, I'm sorry, let me break this down for you a little bit. Jab me, slow motion. Rear hand puts a lid on it. Lead hand lays over top and I'm looking to disrupt the person's balance like that. Now, obviously, Katana is significantly, she weighs a lot less than I do because she's younger. Um, with a full-grown adult who's jabbing at you, what you'll usually end up doing to them is that. Like, with, with the diagonal gun, you end up moving them over here. So if they want to come back with that rear hand, the line is already computed. And... That one in particular is very good for learning our sixth throw. And we're gonna learn at the base, we're gonna learn the six first basic throws and sweeps at this level tonight in this class. So super slow, one more time. Split, that's the first one. Jab again. Slide, that's the second one. Slow on this one. Seco is the third one. Vertical gunting is the fourth one, and diagonal gunting is the fifth one. Okay, um, let's go one more time. Now I'm I'm doing this instructor thing. You'll see when we go into the next area. I'm probably giving you more than you need because I'm forcing you to explore several variables at once and then decide which one fits you best. In reality, for, for combat sake, one or two of these that really fit your body and your attributes is going to be the most effective thing. Okay. But I'm, you know, I like, I, it's the educator in me. I like to present and preserve the material because that's, that's part of being an instructor is making sure that the people who come after you have the tools that they need to perpetuate the system. So Southeast Asian hands, yellow ikit. There are five variables off the orthodox or the left lead jab. So I'm going to split. That's the first variation. Slide. That's the second variation. Seco. That means elbow. That's the third variation. Vertical gunting, that's the fourth variation. Diagonal gunting, okay? And um, yes, I'll say that right now. Like for now, we're doing what we might say in Dog Brothers. We're doing diagonal gunting a little bit martial arts and crafts style. You're not gonna stand there all, <laughs> give me your jab and freeze. You're not going to stand there all day and admire your work, but I'm, I'm trying to show you the variations, okay? So that's the, the fifth section, or sorry, the fourth section is called Southeast Asian Hands. Now, let's learn our six basic throws or sweeps or takedowns. All right, and the first four come from the order that they're taught in at the Inosanto Academy in something called the Kara Sok series, where we learn them off of Kara Sok. We're not gonna do that until later, but I keep the order because that's that's kind of you know what I'm used to. So number one, I'll say these in Indonesian and Filipino and English. Uh, Indonesian, it would be Beset Dalam. Filipino, we just say Silhig. English, we would say a leg sweep or a leg trip in front of the body. 
So she's still in an orthodox lead. She's still going to fire her jab. I'm going to pick my favorite variation from the last section. This first one, I'm going to break her posture and end up in front of her. And I'll, I'll change the camera orientation in just a second. I have a sweep, a knee, and then I attack the other leg. Stand up. Okay. So, um, and my wife was supposed to help me tonight, everybody, but uh, her schedule got moved around a little bit. So Katana's being very nice and helping me. Obviously, I weigh a lot more than Katana. I'm not trying to manhandle her, but I'm also just trying to be light enough to where you can see the technique. So basically, I use a straight arm bar to break her posture. Here is the actual beset dollum. That's the, the leg sweep in front of the body. I knee as I step in, and then I would sweep this foot out. And then I can stomp this, knee the face, and so on. But that's the first technique. Now, if you're by yourself, you're actually kind of like you're you're ahead of me because the next section is the kambongin what would that look like if i don't have a partner to stay here well i might do my split entry in the air simulate this is my left hand this is my right hand simulate stepping into that straight arm bar my right foot does the silhig or the beset i near the person in the face as i step in and then I sweep the other leg out. And I'll talk about the tradition of C-Lot in a, in a moment before we run out of time. Number two um, is Sapudalam or Walisk or a leg sweep, an inside leg sweep. So she jabs me. I'm gonna interrupt her posture here. That makes her uh, left foot very light inside foot sweep and then i collapse her okay so and again everybody i i don't i want <laughs> it's important to me that you're like why is he beating up his 10 year old daughter katana is the only one who's available this evening um so she's being very gracious and letting me demo on her tonight so the lower body on this is jammy i enter i'm inside her left foot I'm anchoring inside foot sweep, and then my other foot collapses. And usually I would, I, you know, if it's a real dire situation, I'm going to collapse that person and grind their knee into the pavement. You know, Silat's mean. Silat is a, a wartime martial art. Okay. The third one is going to be uh, Sapu Luar or still Wallisk, or an outside foot sweep. Um, I've standardized one easy way to get into this. So no matter, you know, so just follow along. So pick any of the ones that I, you know, that I just taught you to deal with that jab. Right elbow, right anchor on the right shoulder, right knee, and then I'm going to push the person into the posture. Downward diagonal pressure with your right hand, rising diagonal pressure with your right foot. We'll do that for you one more time. And I know our, our shots are kind of split right now, everybody. Can I have you again? Okay. So while, while she fixes her Band-Aid there, Basically, I'm doing an, an elbow with my right hand that goes through and an anchor, knee, and I'm stepping into position. Then I'm kind of, yeah, I'm hauling the person down with my hand as I raise with my foot. Okay. Um, trying to find the right mix of elevation. So whatever you want on the hands, Right elbow that goes through and anchors, right knee, and I step into place. Downward diagonal pressure with my hand rising diagonal, and I'm, I'm trying to be real gentle with that fall for her, rising diagonal pressure with my foot. So, I mean, effectively, I'm going like that, like my foot is coming up this direction, and I'm forcing 
the person down with the other hand. Knee, step into place, good. And um, this, this particular idea of off balancing, I call the shoulder line control, okay? Shoulder line control. You're gonna see that in C-Lot again and again and again, is like force pushing down the shoulder line to get somebody compromised as far as their balance. They have to rebase essentially with what, what, what was their lead foot, ah, becomes their rear foot as they try to balance. Number four, because I'm running out of time, is Sapu Luar, or uh, um, Silhig is a leg sweep behind the body. I'm trying to do that throw real gentle for her. Leg sweep behind the body. The side. So whatever you want to do with the hands, I'm hauling this arm down. with my, This is my right hand on the left arm. My left hand anchors as I step behind the person. Then my left leg sweeps behind. And normally you wouldn't really cradle the person's head. Boom, you just drop them and try and have them hit the back of their head on the ground as hard as possible. Um, but I, obviously I don't want to do that with my 10 year old here. Okay. Um, just in the interest of finishing all this, I know I'm going quickly, but you can watch the video later. Five is the uh, Puder Kabbalah or the Labai or the head and arm throw. I'm going to come in, elbow the brachial with my left, left uh, anchor, right underhook, left knee, shoulder line control, lift her arm as I throw her head through. Okay? That one is fun, apparently. Okay? So stand up. All right? So jab me. Okay, so whatever you want here, everybody, any of the variations, any of the ones that we looked at, right hand lowers this as I step into a left elbow of the brachial, left anchor, right underhook, left knee, shoulder line control, lift her arm as I throw her head through, okay? She likes that one apparently, okay? So that's the Puder Kabbalah, head and arm throw. Number six, the last one is the Kinjin, um, which is an Indonesian term. And um, we don't really have a good common term that, that I'm super familiar with for, um, yes, very similar to Panatukan, yes. Um, but anyways, what the one that I really like teaching this off of is the diagonal gunte, because I'll show you the, I'm sorry, coming again. I'll show you the training procedure. You do the diagonal gunte, the expression that I was always taught, you show them your palm, hit them with your palm, step in, compress. Okay, change size with me. Good, if she's laughing, that means she's not hurt, so it's good, okay? All right, so other side, this side. So, show them your palm, hit them with it, step in. So freeze for one second, good time. This is my right arm in front of her. This is my right leg behind her. Now, in a Santo C-Lot, the right leg is not gonna move. One of my first C-Lot instructors, Mahaguru Stephen Plank, used to always teach this with a little hip bump. His joke was you do your Elvis impression. Either one of those are appropriate, but it's this compression that sends the person over your leg. Okay, so one more time on that one. Diagonal gunting, hit them as I move in. Always over the arm. This is, this is a terrible idea, okay? So this always goes over the arm. I'm in and I can compress and take down, okay? She's all right, she's laughing, okay. So, those are the six basics. Um, I know I've gone a little fast, but leg sweep in front of the, so let's just show the basic positions, okay? So the first one was, just, I'm not even gonna fully do it. Leg sweep in front of the body. That was the first one, stand up. Second one was an inside foot sweep. Third one, 
was an outside foot sweep. Fourth one was a leg trip or a leg sweep behind the body. The fifth one was the head and arm throw. And the sixth one was the kinjit or the compression. Okay. The idea here, and I'm, I'm running into FMA time, so I need to wrap this up. The idea here is, thank you very much. You're, you're good. Okay. The idea here is um, we start with those six basics. The second level, we learn those on the other side of the body, because right now we're only attacking the left side of the body. So second level, we learn how to attack the right side of the body. Um, then we add three or four more variations, and then we learn how to take those. We end up with like eight basics. We learn how to take those off of almost every kind of attack that you can, and that's the idea behind that. All right. Um, I'm going to bow the C lot out and then start the FMA. So Chinese, Filipino, Thai, Indonesian, French and dog brothers, Japanese. Thanks for joining me on the C lot. I'm going to end this recording now.